Monsieur Spitzer, my dear friends and colleagues, I came here rather tired. I spent four long hours last night in New York waiting for the flight, but because of fog, we could take off. But I came here now and I listened and I saw what was being shown and said. And I have a question. How come that I didn't know about Ashraf until a few months ago when a few of your friends and leaders called me and spoke to me? Now, I made a vow after the war and actually I quoted it in my Nobel acceptance speech that whenever, wherever human beings will be persecuted, I shall not be silent. So where was I when since 1993 or 97, I saw both figures, Ashraf was already a nightmare. Why didn't I know? Why didn't the world know? After all, some of us, all of us here on the stage, I'm sure, read newspapers carefully, and because of our sensitivity to certain tragedies, we are looking wanting to find something. I have not found the word Ashraf until recently. Where was the world? Mr. Kennedy, you mentioned my first book, Night. Actually, it was translated from Yiddish, my ma mother, mother tongue. And the title was, And the World Was Silent. The world is silent now. Mind you, I don't compare tragedies. Surely not to the one that you refer to, which occurred during the Second World War. But the massacre of men, women, and children is a tragedy that should shake us up. No, nobody knew. So I'm asking you, you who are so involved, heart and soul, with the intensity of the real witness, what do you feel, what did you feel during those years that you probably tried to speak and be heard and you weren't? What happened to the media? What happened to the famous New York Times, or Le Monde here in Paris, and the television stations. Does it mean that there is a difference between victims and other victims? Some victims, yes, we speak about, and others we don't. So I want to understand the editors-in-chief of these papers, or of the NBC, what made them decide not to speak about Ashraf? I don't understand it. I just don't. I promise you that now that I know 
I will try to do whatever I can to wake those people who need to be awakened to this tragedy. So, Patrick, you asked, what do I feel when I watch these pictures? I'll tell you, you may be sure that tonight I will not sleep. Having seen what I have seen, I, I will not sleep. I know myself and therefore I can say that with all guarantee. To make it even less understandable, you, from the clip, you realize that for a few years already, I am waging a campaign all over the world against Ahmadinejad. So I should know more about Iran with regard to Ashraf. I haven't. But I, I, I don't even know, is this conference the first, or is it going to be only the second, or I don't know. One thing is clear, it should, not, it should not end here. I would say, for instance, what we can do. <laughs> then those colleagues and friends of mine who sit on the days, when we go back to America, let's meet. Just let's meet among ourselves and say, it, look, we have been the witnesses to the witnesses. That means there's a certain moral obligation now. When we go back, we cannot just turn the page as if we had not seen the pictures, as if we had not heard the people here. And we would invite you, Mr. Spitzer, to the New York, New York, Washington. What else can I tell you? Look, all, we know people who have influence. I don't, but we know people who do have influence. And when we meet, we should discuss really what should we do in order to move those people to action. Because it cannot go on. It shouldn't go on. It's not just an event that... I would suggest to you that a message should go out from this place. A message simply calling upon every decent young or old man or woman who believe in the nobility of man to say that all of us now are in total solidarity with those who are in Ashraf and those who work and fight for their liberation and their possibility of living as free human beings who do believe in the nobility of man everywhere. Thank you.